need anything? I think we're good. Thanks. No. Got it. All right, it is four o'clock and we'll call the Monday, July 12th Architecture Review Board to order. Uh, Steve, if you could read the rolls, please. All right, Jill Clark. Present. Alderperson Savaglio. He said, uh, Marcus said he was not gonna be able to attend tonight. Jerry Jones. Here. Richard Lindy. Here. Pam Langen. Pam Langen and Robert Heimrow. And for everyone's information, Charlie Wig has uh, submitted his resignation. Oh. So we'll be looking for a new member. And here's Pam. Great. James, and thanks to Charlie for his service while he was with us. Yeah. Uh, so it looks as if we have a quorum. Uh, we'll move to the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone would please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under item 1.3, are there any potential conflicts of interest for the board members today? Yeah, that'd be... All right, so noted, thank you. Thanks. Uh, moving to item 2.1, approval from the minutes from back on July 20, or sorry, June 28th. Make a motion to approve as presented. Thank you. I'm thick seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in uh, approval signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Thank you. Uh, brings us to item 3.1 the proposed exterior remodel of the Green Bicycle Company at 1117 North 8th Street. If you are the applicants, if you could come to the podium uh, and tell us a little what you're proposing. We have the documents you'd submitted we can put up on the screen. You can flip through to wherever you'd like on those. We're just looking for a brief description of what, uh, what you're proposing for us. And then, um, oh, th was I, now I'm on. Okay, thank you. And then with um, respect to the exterior part of the building, the brick and mortar, um, repairing that wherever possible. Um, with respect to um, building preservation, there has been some impact to the inside of the building with respect to moisture and water, so that's an important, important part of the preservation. And then um, finally, we're looking to um, shift the entrance back to the center. So histor historically, in the 1928 photo that we have here, and you can see in the basement of the building, where the, yep, so on the, the photo on the left from 1928, the entrance was originally in the center, and then it was moved, um, yep, to, where, to the side of the building where you see there. We're looking to restore that back to the center. We gained some retail space in that, and also there's been some moisture is issues. Um, the tile that you can see in the current entrance is actually above the basement. It would have to be repaired anyway, so to repair that, you would have to do similar kind of work. Um, also, the, the uh, windows need to be upgraded. Um, so that's the project that we're looking at. And then in collaboration, if you look next, so if you, uh, if you could go one up. Um, I purchased the building in November 2020, and then our neighbor, um, John purchased um, the music box just a few months ago, so we have been in contact with him about um, just making sure that we're partnering on the look of the building so he 
we'll hopefully approach uh, you all at a later date and looking to do improvements. So our, in, our designer uh, created this rendering to show that we are working together to collaborate um, so that not necessarily that we match, but we complement each other. And then to show the colors of the building that we're, that we're looking for. So the, the building was, is already painted and so we're looking to update the colors to our brand colors, which is a mixture of blues and greens um, with black accents. And then we're looking to add the lighting outside to highlight the sign, which is um, the sign is restoring it to that historical lettering above the awning, um, yep, with the colors that you see here. Great, thank you. Um, one question I had was the rendering wasn't showing a uh, fascia or a gravel stop, something at the top of the front elevation, or maybe not the side either. Um, I assume there is something up there. Is that going to be an accent color, or is it just green and fading in, and it is shown, and I'm not just... Seeing. Which section? So, do you want you the, go to the perspective? perspective? At the this very, one or the next one? Yeah, that one will be fine. The very top of the, the brick piers the on either side and across the, the very the top. The cornice? Uh, up at the, the top, yes. Yep, so the initial quote that we received um, was outside of our budget. So okay. we are, so we're paint, paint using the, um, the branding accent colors to do that. And I'm sorry, are you talking about on the south side of the building or on the west side of the building? On the, that would be the west side of the building, I guess, the very front the top edge yep. where the wall stops, there's usually a metal trim piece mm -hmm. there uh, and it's not showing up on the renderings. So there is a metal piece there and that will remain there so as part of the roof. And is it just getting painted green on the front side to match the it wall? It will match, yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Dick, is it yours, Dick? Do you mind hitting your mic? Uh, Dick, can you, Dick? Excuse me, Dick, could you hit your button on the mic? Thank you very much for a very fine presentation. I, I think that will make a nice addition to 8th Street, and I move that your project be approved as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, I'd like to add that having some of us worked right next to this building for many years, it's nice to see it getting fixed up. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none, Steve, if you could call the roll for the vote, please. Joe Clark? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Richard Lindy? Aye. Pam Langan? Aye. And Robert Heimro? Aye. Looks like it passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with the project. Brings us to item 3.2, the proposed construction of the new Watershed Hotel at Niagara and North 15th Street along the Sheboygan River. Uh, if your team could... Introduce yourselves and give us a little background on your project, please. I'd be happy to. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Weaver. I'm with uh, Water's Edge and Watershed Development. Uh, we purchased the land uh, along adjacent to the river um, five plus years ago from the Richardson Company and started the development as the Water's Edge Condominium Project, which was planned to be 32 units uh, of con individual condos. Uh, we built the first 10 in two phases and have kind of struggled with getting the condo traction in this market. So we approached the city with the idea of taking the remaining land and turning it into a boutique uh, hotel, which would be a 25 unit boutique hotel and event space. Um, we've recently uh, gone through the uh, rezoning and we're approved through the council for the rezoning of the land back to, um, I forgot, Steve, what it is, but the suitable urban commercial, suitable urban commercial uh, for being able to build this project. And uh, I'll let Nick Carnahan with GCA explain the details on it, um, but we're looking forward to hopefully bringing uh, a really 
cool, unique uh, boutique hotel and event space to the Sheboygan market, which uh, the studies have shown it would lend itself well to that area as well as the needs uh, of our market. So thank you for your consideration. Hello, my name is Nick Carnahan. I'm with Galbraith Carnahan Architects. Uh, we were the architects for the Water's Edge condominiums and are now helping out on the architecture for uh, the Watershed Hotel. Um, so the, the uh, inspiration for the hotel really draws um, from, partially from what we've been doing to the south in the Water's Edge condos. So the uh, material palette is very similar to the uh, condominiums um, along the river, uh, white uh, trim with black metal roofing and um, a masonry base. So it tries to, tries to pull a lot of the, uh, the materials of that uh, northwards onto the hotel site. Um, and it's also, uh, uh, inspiration is drawn a lot from sort of the nautical um, past of Sheboygan, so not in the way of like uh, anchors and, and life, life preservers, but um, we looked really towards the um, wooden boats uh, and how they were constructed um, and in the, the way that they show the structure of the boat, um, they show the, the ribbing of the boat, um, and that's a, a motif that we've picked up throughout the design of the hotel. Uh, and then as well as the um, kind of a nod to the the lumber yard history of the site. So for nearly a century, this was a, a lumber yard. Um, and so in the design, we've utilized um, lumber and timber and framing. So you'll see a lot of that uh, material throughout the, the, uh, the project itself. Um, so here's a, a good view. This is from the river side, um, looking back towards the hotel. Uh, and it's got um, sort of our, uh, you know, sort of the main uh, palette of materials here with the brick masonry base, um, roughly 24 inches tall uh, that wraps the building. Uh, above that is white smooth lap siding uh, that will mimic what's happening on the, the condominiums to the south. Um, and then the the whole composition is kind of capped off by metal roofing and fascia um, with exposed wood uh, rafter tails and decking underneath. So you'll, as you're looking up at the building, you'll kind of see this uh, ribbed structure um, that harkens back to both the lumber history of that site and then the the uh, kind of construction of wooden boats as well. Uh, another thing that we were really cognizant about um, in the the sort of the site planning aspect of it was the proximity to the river and um, how we treat water before it enters that uh, watershed, um, sort of where we got the name for the hotel. And so throughout the, the property, there's gonna be some extensive um, kind of water filtration processes that are, are celebrated and highlighted uh, before that water enters the, uh, enters the uh, downstream and into the harbor. So this is a, a site plan here. Um, you can see the condominiums to the southern end of the site. Um, and then the hotel is kind of at an angle there to really maximize the views uh, to the north and the west across the river. Um, these are elevations of the building here. Um, so uh, it's a, a two-story structure. Um, and on the northern end, you see the open um, uh, event space. So that'd be a, a large open air pavilion um, that could house uh, you know, small, small events, um, uh, small weddings and, and retirement parties, that type of thing. So it's a, a 25 room hotel, um, two stories, and then the, the main center tower there uh, feeds into the, the two story lobby. And then that lobby runs uh, from the, the street back to the river, um, kind of creating a cross axis across the building. Yeah, here's some, and zoom in on the, the building plan there. Yeah, the blue is black, that's a, <laughs> 
I don't know why that got translated in the, the PDF that way, but uh, the window framing would be black to match the the uh, the aesthetic of the condos to the south. I would just add that there's no food service um, and no no operating kitchen in here. We are going to have a um, basically like a prep kitchen so that caterers can come in and, and use this facility and be able to properly set up for the catering aspects of it. So whoever locally might be interested in doing that would come over and handle the events that way, but we're not going to have a full service kitchen um, or any products being made on site. Great, Mike, it's a, a different look from most of the hotels we've seen in the last few years, uh, but it seems to be well thought out. Any particular one you want me on? Is this stay on the elevation or? I guess it depends where the questions go. Uh, <laughs> any questions, comments, or concerns from the board? Or things you want more information on? Did you get it done by the Ryder Cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You put the elevation up, Steve? Yeah. I guess one question while he's doing that, just the parking? And parking requirements for the site, are those uh, accommodated down by the condos? Yes, there um, were there's previously going to be two condo buildings built, okay. and we are berming off between them and making the condo area private. So that there won't be a kind of, there, there used to be obviously a center kind of uh, street through the middle of them or aisle. Um, there's no longer a center street. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And the garage is back up to that parking area too, so it makes sense to for the lighting and the noise of the parking and the way that we designed it, I think that it's 28. Yep. 28. 28. Yep. yep. With the yep. accessible. Yep. So they should be good there. Great. Thank you. And if anybody asked about for events, we also own the Dalmas building and the LTP building across the streets, and we would be able to use those lots for um, valet parking in, in case of events. Um, like the city was kind enough to put in a brand new street to the 15th and Niagara, which is very wide, so it does currently accommodate on street parking too for additional events. On the north elevation, could you take a deeper dive on that? Just to explain kind of what's going on for those of us who are not experts on that, just to get a, just to get a closer look at two different aspects of that on that elevation. Sure. So the the north side here, um, kind of what you see at the center on the in the foreground there, um, that's the the open air structure um, for the event space. So that would be you know rentable seven eight months out of the year. Um, what you're seeing uh, lowest and closest to you is sort of a circular uh, down just a little right there. Yep. That's a uh, sort of a big circular gathering area, um, a sort of a focal point at the end of that gathering space. So it could be, you know, a bride or groom's head table, um, or if it was a, a retirement party, it could be a more informal seating area down at the end. Um, and then between that and the, the hotel itself is a, an open air structure um, that it has its the low end of its roof along the street, and then it opens up out to the west uh, to get uh, views of the river. And then, as the sun is setting uh, in the west, there uh, most of the events will happen um, in the afternoons and early evenings, and so it allows more light kind of to penetrate uh, underneath that roof. Are there any rooms? There, so there's a, the first floor has got restrooms and a small um, uh, seating area for the, the uh, lobby. And then on the second floor, those are actually the two, um, the two main uh, like bridal suites. So the thought was put the, put the people most likely uh, associated with the event closest to the event. Um, and so that acts as kind of a buffer between whatever's going on out in the, the event space and the hotel itself. And then the lobby, um, if you look in plan, the lobby actually happens between those two rooms and the, the balance of the hotel. Um, so it's, uh, it's all accessed uh, through a little uh, second floor pedestrian bridge across the lobby to get to those two kind of premium rooms. Great, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Yep. Any 
Any other questions? Hearing nothing, I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve as presented, subject to the consent. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Steve, if you could please call the roll. Sure. Joe Clark. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Richard Lindy. Aye. Pam Langan. Aye. And Robert Heimerl. Aye. Super. Good. That is approved. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck with the project. Thank you. All right. So that brings us to item 3.3. The former addition and exterior remodel of Sheboygan Christian School that we approved a while back, uh, coming back for some mechanical discussion. Good afternoon. My name is Ann Steenweik. I'm the Director of Academics and Instruction at Sheboygan Christian School. I'd like to first um, introduce the rest of my team here today. Um, Paul Mentink is here from Abacus. Um, Eric Adi is here uh, as chairman of our steering committee and long range planning. And Ryan Moeller is one of our um, board members and rooftop expert, I would say. <laughs> um, thank you for allowing us to um, come to the table with our, this request for an appeal. The appeal is um, for reconsideration of the rooftop screenings for the rooftop units. Um, Greenfield Avenue um, is not a significant um, thoroughfare, and when we look at the, the pictures from Greenfield Avenue, it's not a significant, although we understand um, the aesthetics, it's all for aesthetic reasons, we believe that um, we would rather um, use that $50,000 to go toward other aesthetic improvements um, given the $6.9 million project. We, um, as you can see, we're working hard to make the front of the building, the north of the building, more aesthetically uh, pleasing and have done significant renovations and additions to that space. What we would like to do with the 50,000 that we could save with um, eliminating rooftop screenings um, would be to um, put that money toward our outdoor learning space, our playground, our parking lot, all areas that are currently um, not in the budget for improvements, and we would much rather see those um, funds spend toward other aesthetic improvements. We have here pictures in the folder of um, obviously the before and after pictures. Our current pictures, we're in the middle of the building construction currently. And you can see there um, what the street view is of the rooftop units currently. And what the finished plan should look like. We did um, take a look at other schools in our neighborhood, Wilson being one of them, as well as um, Christ Child Academy. Um, those rooftop units are actually more visible and they do not have screenings on them. So we wanted to make sure that our rooftop um, units, if they were significantly visible, um, obviously there would be a different consideration um, with this appeal, but we felt we wanted to at least present um, the option of either painting them to make them a little bit more um, or less visible, I guess. Um, and the contractor also suggests just taking the stickers off to make them less visible. We could certainly paint them white to blend with the, with the rooftop. Steve, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to lead with. No, it was one of those ones that this was an item of discussion at the time when they had originally come in, and at that point in time, the HAC plans weren't uh, developed, and so I don't believe anyone had a real idea other than taking a look at the elevations without anything being shown. Um, Paul Mentink had called me the other day in terms of taking a look at the screening, 
once I saw the screen and I indicated, yeah, that these definitely would need to be screened. Uh, subsequent to that, I spoke to someone up at, from the school, I'm not sure uh, who the representative was, who had asked, hey, what might we be able to do? And I indicated to them that you could uh, take the pictures, uh, provide some documentation to the board, and at least have a discussion back with the board in terms of their board's consideration as to what types of things uh, could be done to help screen this. Um, you've heard uh, the two options that they've talked about, which is to paint and to have stickers uh, removed. Um, I mean, they are fairly visible, and uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, sufficient to the board or not. I would be interested in hearing what the architect might have to say as to if those are the only options or what else might be available, but um, they're definitely out there. And so it was a topic of discussion when they first came to us. We just didn't know where they were going. Great, thank you. I'd, I'd like to start off by saying we're incredibly supportive of the, the school and the project yeah. and your mission, and certainly don't want to see money spent where it doesn't need to be. Um, but I think from the architecture review board's position, we're, I'm concerned, I don't want to speak for everyone, um, when it was such a, a critical design item that was mentioned in the initial review, I'm just curious how the project got to the point of being built with these units in what, from as, as I'm looking at it, they're in a very prominent location with a roof slope where you look right up the slope of the roof, and then the units are interrupting that. And they, they do seem very prominent to me. I'm just curious how, as the HVAC design was developed, knowing that they needed to be screened, that that was overlooked. If you wouldn't mind coming up to the mic. Just, it's just that now that you understand the cost of it better, um, I don't know what and I certainly understand the city's point of view on this, and we run into this on other projects. I guess I don't know what we're gaining. Um, these are very clean rooftop units. There's no rooftop duct work. You know, it's literally a box. All the ducts come straight down. And so, you know, I think, I think painting them white is, is a great compromise. If we screen them, in my mind, all we're doing is creating a larger box on the roof, you know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't improve it, it just makes it bigger. Um, I don't know what color we would, you know, the only color that would make sense for that screening I think would be white, the roof is white. Um, we certainly wouldn't want to do them blue, you know, to match the siding because that would make them stand out even more. I, I just think painting them white would be a great compromise rather than making the screens white and then they're going to be two or three feet bigger than than the units that's already up there. Um, like Ann said, taking that $50,000 and using it towards, um, the budget was very tight on this, so, you know, using that towards some extra playground equipment or fixing up the parking lot nicer, um, things that weren't originally able to fit in the budget seemed like um, a better use of that money and from an aesthetic standpoint, you know, maybe a better place to put that money. But I guess we wanted to have that discussion with you guys. Certainly open to other thoughts from the board. I just think it's unfortunate we're to this point and that that wasn't something when the an initial design was approved, it was with the stipulation that any rooftop equipment would be well screened and it isn't. Um, well, it's not installed yet. Um, it's not that it's not, it's the rooftop screening would be mounted to the units. Um, so, and the, and I've been where you're standing, Paul, making the same argument on various projects, so I, I do sympathize. Uh, what's thrown back at us often in that situation is that the screening in theory is also supposed to provide some acoustical buffering so that the sound is less uh, obnoxious for neighbors. Whether there's validity to that or not, I don't really know, uh, but that, that's one of the other concerns. It's not just visual, there's potentially some sound concern. Okay. And if the <coughs> owner's group has a rooftop unit expert with you, if that's not correct, please let me know. Um, 
Um, yeah, from a roofing uh, standpoint, um, I, I, I've never heard that before. I've never noticed any kind of acoustic um, uh, gain off something like that. I know from a roofing, uh, you know, I look at, you know, keeping the building uh, leak proof, safe for the kids and, and, and any time that you add on additional um, rooftop units, or it, it, it always creates a more vulnerable uh, areas for the, to, ma to, to maintain leak proof. Um, and it, even if you look at, and we've dealt with roof screenings, I've been in the roofing industry for 20 years, we deal with them all the time. Um, but even the roof, the, the manufacturers of this, the, the main thing, the main benefit is acoustics and that's pretty much it. There are a lot, even the manufacturers give a lot of cons, um, you know, for, because you have to maintain these, you, you have to, this is a penetration that goes through the roof deck, you know, into the, into the, and I don't know if they're if they're being constructed. You had mentioned they're on the units. Some are constructed on the I'm units. The ones that they were looking at the most seem to be the protective Yeah, and the, and the, there's so there's those and that those that are connected right to the main structure yeah. as well. And then there's also the um, the service of the HVAC units. Then those would have to be removed. More vulnerability putting the panels on the new roof membrane, potential leaking. Um, roofing manufacturers and roofing contractors, anytime that you can eliminate roof screens, it's always better for you know, the, the building uh, as far as a maintenance issue. Um, and again, I would say, I could see if it was a, a high traffic area, there's really not a lot of uh, construction around that area. There's a wastewater tramp, you know, uh, right there, but there's there's no development. Um, I think we're, I think the school is really uh, beautifying the area as it is. Um, so that's what I would like to add. Yeah, there are definitely improvements to the building, which are much appreciated, thank you. Um, I guess the concern is that we're We've really been trying to make sure that all new construction, the rooftop units, is something that we've been uh, aware of and trying to make sure that they're screened. You know, have one of the downfalls to the design build approach where we can't review that as part of the design review up front, not knowing. You know, this architectural form just doesn't seem to really lend itself to those units. Uh, it's, it's kind of awkward placement of those where they need to be for efficiency for mechanicals, but at the expense of aesthetics. Um, and that's primarily what we're here for, is to review the aesthetics of buildings. Um, and we, we are finding we have to be careful with precedents. Uh, schools like yours, where we'd love to make an exception, uh, then the next project comes in and says, well, you let them do it, why can't we do it? And it's, it's tough to say, well, because they were nicer than you are. <laughs> um, so we're trying to be more constant with our uh, responses to these. If this were coming in as a review as it is right now, I'm fairly confident saying the board wouldn't approve it without screening on those units. Um, but that's, that's just my interpretation from where we've been previously. I guess I'd love to hear from the rest of the board your thoughts. You mentioned there are other schools nearby, Wilson School and there are other schools that have Rooftop mechanicals that are visible? Um, there was, uh, they pointed out Wilson and Christchild. Christchild was done in, I think, 2008, but Wilson was 2017. Mm -hmm. There's a section of their gym and their offices that has uh, a unit on it. So um, there's some mention there of those units so I'd have to say, yeah, there's uh, some that are out there. So uh, 2008, obviously a little bit of a different time frame, but the ones they discuss and point out are open. And that was 2017 or uh, 18? That was the Wilson one, right. So I don't know, you know, even whether or not it's these front ones or, or you know, I don't know whether it's all, whether it's, uh, but, uh, Anyways, 
Steve, just a question. Um, I think in discussions you had with Paul, uh, we were allowed to eliminate the south side of our screens. Is that correct? So in other words, do we are we allowed to have three side screening on our units? I don't know if there And the only be. reason why I ask that is is that when you look at our school, we've got residential subdivisions to the west and we have residential to the north. Uh, our athletic fields are to the south along with uh, land that Alliant owns. Right. And then everything to the east is owned by Alliant. So uh, would that be a compromise where if we put a two-sided screening to the north and to the west on all these units, now we've screened everything to the residential subdivisions, mm -hmm. but, you know, we would we would be open to something like that as well if painting, once yep. again, you know. And I did, I did have a conversation like that with the architect, and I said that I thought that was potentially a reasonable option in terms of doing it towards Greenfield and maybe having a little bit more uh, the ability to have it open to the south, so that is a fair and correct statement from my perspective. And I thought that was a compromise uh, that would work and uh, whether or not it was, uh, so when you take a look, you can, and, and to me, you know, probably, you know, and, and I don't know if everyone thinks all of them, if it's, for example, the four that are closest, say, for example, to Greenfield on the north sides of the additions, I didn't know if there was a numbers perspective. I think those ones on the interior of that space are, are a little bit uh, visible too, but I, I certainly uh, would not have a problem with a proposal like that at all. I think it tries to address the, uh, con the concern. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. I, what I would recommend, and this is just based on, if you could put the drawing back up, uh, yeah, I would say the ones that are closest, which are at the bottom of the picture here, uh, just down some. Uh, it's easier to look on the drawing below. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about Thank that. Thank you. So that would be those that are closest, those four. The remainder, I think, are far enough removed. Um, so I would say the two-sided screen uh, theory works on that for me and potentially painting the others. So my recommendation would be uh, to move for approval of the two-sided solution on the four in front uh, with the remainder just being painted. That was a motion? Yes. Do we have a second? So that you mentioned the three-sided, so this would be two, this would be the side well, where the four are the most prominent on Greenview and then the other. Right. And I, and I think, and I'm assuming we would surround them, right? And Correct. just have the opening to the south? Correct. Or, so, so yeah, in essence, like th a three-sided. Three okay, that's what I was right, saying. Right, Jerry? Correct. I'm sorry, I missed Okay. Nope. I was, yeah, I was okay. Just so, wondering about that. Mm -hmm. The motion is now amended to be three-sided. Only on the ones in the front row. And open to the south. Correct. So we have a motion on the floor. Pam is seconding. Under discussion, I guess I would add, I just pulled up Wilson on... Google Maps as we were talking. Yeah. It looks as if the, the large rooftop unit on the most recent edition is fully screened. The ones on the older part of the building aren't. But it, it sure looks, I could be wrong, but yeah. it looks as if there's a It was hard to tell, but it looked like there was that. something around there. I don't think it was in here, but I just pulled that up. But so I, then we would paint the others. Correct. That was the Good motion, question. I that think. was not. Was part that was part of, of my motion. Yeah. That was part of them. Yeah. Uh, just the ones that are not being screened. I think it's kind of a double. It's unnecessary to paint the ones that are being screened. Thanks for clarifying that. So the motion is to three sides screen the four units to the north, and the other new units would be painted. Correct. Sorry. And that, your second on that, Pam. Mm -hmm is consistent. So is everyone comfortable with what we're potentially voting on? Any further discussion items? Because it seems to me that's a, a reasonable compromise to try to help out. So Steve, if you could please call the rolls. Joe Clark. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Richard Lindy. Aye. Pam Langan. Aye. And Bob is abstaining.
Perfect. That looks as if it passes on the uh, the appeal. So thank you for bringing it back to us. Thanks. And then I can just work with Paul or whomever just kind of to show see the end result, just bring in, sending that in, and we can go from there. When are you guys, um, uh, where are you guys at as far as construction and and uh, getting in and for, for fall and that kind of thing? Looks like well, you're moving right along. I don't know if Ann wants to add to that, but uh, uh, apparently the contractor is getting nervous. Uh, we do have a school year that starts kind of early compared to other schools, <laughs> August, I believe the third week of August. So uh, they are scrambling around to get done, but uh, they're still assuring us that uh, we should get done and, and be in. So yeah, looks good, man. Yeah, the, right, right now the addition, the north additions are completed, nearly complete, um, and they'll be ready. And then the front entrance on the um, west end is getting, um, is underway right now. So, we're so will you guys be able to get out of Geely? Yes. 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 So confident, yes. <laughs> yes. August 19 is the finish date. Yeah. So yeah. the school it. starts August 25th. Wow. So. All right. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Good, Good luck. Thank you. All right, Sierra. Any other items of discussion? Yeah, yeah. There was um, one other minor item um, just for the board's sake. Uh, we are not going to be recording anymore or having phone uh, call ins. So um, that is done and we're going back to what we've done previously with everyone in person being at board members and applicants. So, you know, everyone has done, you know, a really good job and, and I apologize for uh, having to send out some emails, but I really appreciate when you guys uh, help out on that because sometimes I get people from out of the city or what have you. And so your uh, responses and quick on that are very helpful to me so I can make sure that we got quorums for the people coming in. So just, just to make everyone aware of that, that is not gonna be an option anymore and everything will be in person. Okay. Okay. And uh, meeting on the 26th? We like will things. have one. Okay. Mark your calendars. Yes. Uh, with that, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Stand adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good. Here we go. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. It's a good meeting. Yeah.